Wow, that's very interesting. That's also, cool. I love the idea of the Queen just having her own cinema room. Of course she like, does. Could you put on Reservoir Dogs, I'd please? like to see Fast and Furious yeah. 9. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, do you have the fate of the Furious? <laughs> do you have John Wick in Chapter 4? <laughs> I like pa- it. Parabellum? <laughs> I like it already. She f- shit up. <laughs> So we got to watch um, 25 minutes of Despicable Me, Despicable Me 4 on mute the other day. We did. <laughs> That's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> uh, we did. Always an interesting exercise. We are watching a film on mute like when you watch it on a plane. We yes. watch the person over the shoulder, over the shoulder viewing. Mm. It really does tell you about the foundational building blocks of cinema so and how you can tell story without sound. Yes. A few months ago, so basically sometimes me and George will get the opportunity to go and film inside an empty screen always good fun to have a screening to yourself mm-hmm. we have a lot of fun in there and like for the lighting we'll ask them can you just play a film yes but on mute so we can record some content and always like yeah yeah and it's like what would you like i don't know something bright and colorful mm. nothing too dark and the first time we did this was with barbie yes and it was around barbenheimer time and we would just watch we actually got by, really by which time we'd both seen it twice yes and, and we really got sucked in for about you know maybe almost half the film just like seeing this film in mute and it was a really mm. interesting experience and obviously we'd seen it but we were sort mm. of experiencing it again and like the Barbie world is so visual and compelling mm. and then we did it again just recently they whacked on Despicable Me 4 and that was also quite an interesting thing yes. to take in less less impactful than Barbie I'd say on mute yes not that that matters as much <laughs> no I still was able to follow the Me story the best films to watch on mute <laughs> from nine it sounds like an insult to say watch film on mute but yeah. uh, but it is true that I when you watch a film like Despicable Me on mute, you, particularly because it's a kids' film, you see how much of storytelling is done in the visual, in the motion, and the pacing. You know, it's the mm. motion, quick, 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 because the surroundings are moving in a blurry blur, and yeah. then it stops, and then you have quick, 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 and it's like it has its complete rhythm, which is there. I do think it apparently is an exercise. I think they do in film school, which uh, along with watching films with subtitles, is watching some films on mute, mm. so you can understand and see the cuts. And Despicable Me 4 obviously has great dialogue, great voice acting, but I reckon it's so much more important for that film to work for people who aren't understanding the dialogue, yes. right? And obviously sound is still obviously really important in that, but you get, we watched like a supermarket chase scene and I was like, yeah, I get it. This is all that very much it, there without the sound. If, you, if you're a parent, you're taking your children, let's say you might have an eight-year-old and a four-year-old. That mm. film can work for both. Yeah. Brightly coloured and quick enough for the four-year-old, mm. in more, more plot driven for the eight-year-old. And it, it's, it, we talk about it because you've never seen a film on mute in the cinema. Not in a cinema, I hope you haven't. <laughs> or a silent film. Or even silent films have music. They do. So Absolutely right. that's why it's kind of interesting. It's actually very, a very rare experience. And on a plane, you're obviously watching it over the shoulder. Like I've seen Kong's got, uh, Godzilla versus Kong 1. God. On a plane, Poor you. you know, and you just see yourself watching. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, I've basically seen this film. Was it you? You saw the guy watch all three Ocean's Eleven yeah. movies back to back. <laughs> yeah, did 11, 12, 13. That's the time the to do it. Do yeah. you go on a plane? Yeah, just go. Uh, it, it, it is is Ocean's relevant at the moment? No. <laughs> is that what this? I think it was a woman ex- wanted to do exactly on that long plane. I'd love yes. it if she was actually like over the moon. She got on the flight and she was like, "They have you, you're 11, not 12, it. and 13." You're, uh, honey, you're not going to believe it. They've got all of them. All of them. All through. Do they have Ocean Say? No, no one watches we'll watch that. We'll watch it when we get home. God. <laughs> don't interrupt me. No, if they don't. come around for food, don't interrupt me. I'm yeah. watching 11, 12, and 13. Yeah. I have a schedule. Yeah, that was it. Just blitz them. Fantastic. Fantastic. We, um, we, on, a, on the flip side, we also saw a film also on mute, but outdoors. We went to an outdoor event, outdoor yeah. screening event, a very British summertime, completely rained uh, event for this um, for this screening, but um, what was interesting is that James and I were very flattered to be invited. It was a sort cool. of every uh, every man outdoor screening uh, that happened in Watford. So it's more very different uh, like, from uh, the uh, urban uh, every man. Uh, uh, Watford to start with, yeah. but then like Hertfordshire, deep Hertfordshire. Like and we really, got the postcode and it, I didn't recognise it. <laughs> I had to shake my phone like there was an error. No, surely that's a typo. <laughs> but how will I get home? Um, and we did trek there, but I tell you what, you know, uh, what's often nice about when we get invited to these events is the spread. And, you know, we've been to a lot of nice events now, which we're very thankful for. And Mm. obviously starting this thing, we didn't know we were going to get invited to that stuff. Mm. But um, this was the best spread we've ever had. Yes. And, and, And we're talking, they said it'd be a summer barbecue, by which I expected two blokes with a burger van, maybe frying up some... No, no, flown in from the UAE. Flown in from Dubai. We have, I mean... 
we're just going to say, because also we arrived there. It's, it's important to contextualize everything yeah. so we don't seem like greedy pigs. No. We, we arrived there, what we thought was on time, but actually we were like half an hour, 40 yeah. minutes behind everyone yeah. else. So it was a feeding frenzy. No chairs and tables left. And, and you've got a three-sided kind of arena space in this outdoor area of just food and everyone is just lining up and we were like oh my goodness we better hurry up because the film's going to start soon we need to, get, need to get some food sashimi stand lobster as much lobster as you could eat octopus fillet steak with chimichurri just a huge just help yourself oven roasted mediterranean veg a huge Orgy paella salad like, like massive about as big as paella pots get i mean huge, huge. and then uh, i had three desserts George, why wouldn't I? I? I was sort of, I was eating a lot and I usually go to town, but I was like, I didn't want to bloat myself because I was doing a big run a few days later, but like, I, you and I could really do some damage. I actually think, yeah, I mean, I, I even I thought I was a bit restrained, really, yeah. if, if we'd had more time, but I mean, oh, yeah. it was fantastic. We have sort of like, you know, obligations and we to were, be polite. Yeah, we were just sort of sat there thinking, this is this like, is very we've good. been sort of dropped in and they're showing a movie, they're showing big on an outdoor screening, yeah, which big. was lovely. But when, well, basically, when we, we have a bit of, because we're new to this, we have a bit of a scarcity mentality. Oh my God, free food. And it was kind of like, huh, any sort of sense of decorum went out the window and we were just like, no food went together. No, f why would you ever have fillet steak with chimichurri next to sashimi? And, and, and well, uh, uh, maybe not with sashimi, yeah. Surf and turf is common. Yes, but sure. Yeah. But this sashimi, is, yeah, this I, lo I very love much a, when, when, they, when you get unlimited sashimi, oh, I just absolutely ruin their budget. Do you know what they didn't have? Because this was even better than that. No pizza oven. Yeah. Be, it would have been very easy would to give complete. everyone pizzas, but yeah. they just... Uh, the fantastic. next best uh, food spread we had was that a Griselda event for the Netflix. Yes, Netflix series my called Griselda. Show, Rory. D D uh, Griselda? We, the immediately, me and George just acknowledged, like, hang on, this food... Is phenomenal. It, it was canapes, but fantastic yeah. canapes. When I say <laughs> that me and George easily had, I want to say 15% of the canapé allocation for this entire event of what? 100 to 200 people. It relied on two things. We, first of all, knew where the door was, where the, the canopies were coming they out from. They were coming out and we were like, and like Leonidas in the 300. It was a narrow pass and we would just bottleneck. basically pottle them up. Yeah. And then also what helps is that the, the, the waiters who were bringing the food out, often at events, they'll know the people who are lingering yeah. and they'll be like, no, I've got to just, and they, they didn't mind. No. They were, they, were, they were happy to give it to us straight away. Ceviche, mm. lobster. The, um, the was it tacos. Like beef brisket that was like on a, on a like braised beef. Yeah, braised Fantastic. beef brisket is so good. Really I, nice. I just, I remember just, we spent the first half of that event not talking to anyone else. Nope. Just lasered in on getting, I mean, we easily cost that event more money than <laughs> no, 10 or 20 people would have done. <laughs> they probably go, yeah, like three canapes per person. I had 15. It was great. It was, it was really it was, good. It was Fantastic great. spread. So, so happy that I guess. So, so we do, we are, we are fed well, which, which is lovely. But anyway, outdoor cinemas, indoor cinemas, it's the summer of film viewing. But there's mm. only one big film we'll be talking about this week, James. Huge film. The, the biggest Hugh Jackman <clears throat> film this week. Huge Jacked Man. In this episode 139 of Pulp Kitchen, which is of course, Deadpool and Wolverine. He's actually, of all the times we've seen him do Wolverine, he's the slimmest. Still Compared Jack, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, he's still huge. But he, like, in X-Men Days of Future Past and the Wolverine films, he's always been a lot bigger. This, he's... <laughs> I guess he's just older. Yeah. And I mean that in a polite way. I mean, he's 55. Don't, he can't... Don't, 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 don't fire. Don't, don't fire your trainer. <laughs> yeah, don't throw your back out trying to get, yeah. you know, an extra couple of pounds. So he's sort of, you know, he looks great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, terrific. Anyways, we've been talking about that today. We've now seen the final, we've seen the whole film now yeah. in its entirety, not just the first 35 minutes like we did a few weeks ago. Um, we've got some emails about it. We'll also be doing a spoiler bonus episode mm -hmm. this week about it. So this review will be spoiler free. There'll be no spoilers. Don't worry about it. And then if you want to chat about all the stuff that happens in it, come listen to the bonus, which will be out later this week. Also, guys, we have reacted to the news that Tony Stark is back in well, the MCU. This is the Robert Downey Jr. is back. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Is, back. is back in the MCU. The Russo brothers are back helming Avengers 5 and 6. Me and George just, George just shot Double Take, which will be out by the time you're listening to this. Unpacking the news, digesting it, discussing our theories, what we think about the whole situation, whether or not we love it, hate it. Go and check that out on Double Take Now. The link is in our description to go and access yeah, that. But it, it was uh, in interesting, interesting time. Exciting. You look news. a bit like Doctor Doom today. You've got the Doctor I've Doom got the colors. Green, yeah, you could I could have been with on a... with the mask. Oh, one of the interns. Did you hear the, the video that Marvel actually posted? Because it's from the audience. It's somebody filming it on their their phone, right? Yeah. Literally, as the person walks forward, you can hear a pin drop. And as the person takes off the mask, somebody just goes, Jared Leto. <laughs> and, it's Downey Jr. and I'm like, no, thank goodness it wasn't Jared Leto. Oh, it's Michael Morbius. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
anyway. so yeah, you can check that out. Uh, good times. But good uh, times. without further ado, should we jump into Deadpool and Wolverine? Let's do it. MCU just owns the news, the film of the week. They, they own just us. kind of own us. They turn up like that uh, unfortunate relative at a, at a holiday, you know, like a Christmas or a Thanksgiving. Mm. Oh, hi, I brought all my stuff. You're talking about me now. Kevin Feige's just like, I am media and entertainment. Mm. Oh. It's my posit. My podcast. <laughs> yeah. My empire. My MCU. That was a Dune yeah. Dune. So, George, we are back now with a full review of Deadpool and Wolverine. A few weeks ago, we got invited to a very cool event to go and see Deadpool and Wolverine, yeah. but only the first 35 minutes. It was a big spectacle. Mm. They really made a deal that this is an event movie. Yes. Um, it were, we saw Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman come together, and Sean Levy was there. Mm. Levy, Levy, Levy? I'm going for Levy. Levy. And uh, big event, music things. We talked all about our first... You know, our first impressions, but get, with the caveat that, look, we'd only seen 35 minutes. We've now both gone to see the full film. I'm actually just saying, maybe I do say Levy. I'm confused now. <laughs> Sean Levy to the Levy when Levy, Levy was dry. Um, we both got invited to go to an actual screening, which I couldn't make, unfortunately. I really thought I, I would make it. I, I was flying I back from for Portugal. Southview. The flight was going to be two hours after my landing time. And I thought, just shove the bags to Talia and just beeline, unfortunately, like with, because Skynet went down the week before, planes, I feel like, were still having that knock-on effect, and um, I was stuck on the plane for three hours, couldn't go. Anyway, saw it yesterday, we're back, we've both seen it, we are picking up, uh, the film actually talks a lot about how this is Deadpool joining the MCU, but it's very much an MCU adjacent film. Mm. We are obviously bringing in Wolverine and therefore the X-Men universe into the MCU. If you didn't know, Disney bought Fox, what, two, three years ago? Uh, 2019, actually. Oh, wow, it's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. Disney bought Fox. That obviously gives Kevin Feige the rights to even more characters, yes. even more things. We get to meld these things together. Um, the first hint we got that X-Men were part of the MCU was when, spoilers for Division, when Quicksilver um, from the oh, Days yes. of Future Past yes turned up in, in an episode of that and it was the first inkling yes. of like a good gag though because then it turned out to be not Quicksilver yeah. which I love that was really smart it's, it's smart but obviously like, yes, it really was absolutely, the, the rights yeah. and the, the likeness rights. of the faces mm -hmm. was, was all very good fun so we pick up with Deadpool um, he, where do we pick him up? He's still very much, he's, he's retired in this variant of himself. Yes, because his, 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 his wife has broken up with him. Broken up with him. Um, and the main thing is he wants to show that what he, he wants to do something that really matters. There's a very funny scene where he pitches himself to Happy, Happy Hogan mm -hmm. to pitch, he auditions to be, oh, he interviews to be an Avenger back in 2018, mm -hmm. but is politely declined. Um, and he's on a quest to, to prove that he can do something not just for himself. Cut to the interfering of the TVA who join him to who tried to like interview with him <laughs> because way, of crimes. Here against, comes the plot. <laughs> here comes the plot. Um, almost just, uh, I'm assuming you all have achieved your masters in MCU for a lot of yeah. this, so you're keeping up with me. The TVA are after him for crimes against the sacred timeline. Bring him into the TVA. He's met by uh, a very sort of MCU version of Tom Wamsgams from Succession, yep. who is a sort of corporate time TVA authority trying to keep times aligned. Tells him, look, your timeline is no is at risk because a core character, not you, will. Wolverine was killed, and unfortunately, your timeline is going to be uh, eradicated from existence. I'm going to need you to do some stuff. Uh, and he's like, if you can bring back a Wolverine. No, does he say, like, you're, you can come out of this timeline, but we're yep. shutting your, well, your, your timeline down. And then Deadpool, yes, <laughs> Deadpool says, hang on, if I just get another Wolverine, that then my timeline will survive because all my is. friends are here. Because Tom Wamsgans, sorry, Matthew McFadden, was like, hey, you can't bring any of your friends. We're just saving you because yep. we think you could be useful to this one. That was it. And then he goes and shops around for Wolverines. Q finds, montage. Q, Q montage, finds a certain Wolverine variant and obviously brings each other, bring them into a shot, bring, bring each other into their own plots. Mm. Can um, I just also add this point? <laughs> yeah, please. So I went to see this because um, uh, James couldn't make it. I brought my girlfriend instead. Uh, we saw it with two friends of ours as well. But before we went, I, I thought, okay, Anna, do you how how do you much do you know about the X Men and and explaining the X Men to someone who's never X Men before? No, oh, like she, oh my God. she she was like, I think I've heard of them, and I was like, you know about Wolverine? She was like, oh, I know it's Hugh Jackman. I was like, okay, and you know the there are mutants. And I, I, honestly, when I got to the bit where I was like, it's Patrick Stewart in a wheelchair and he can read people's minds, she was like, that's a joke, right? And I said, no, no, I need McKellen can bend metal. She was like, this is, this is some sort of weird prank. And I said, no, no, Shakespearean actors, yeah. Patrick Stewart, and, and then, I had to, then I had to bring her up to speed on like the business 
this acquisition of Disney buying Fox and the rights of certain characters and what's Marvel and what's like. It was just very funny, very exhausting. The main central joke of this film is that they are, it is aware of the fact that Fox has bought Disney. Yeah. Deadpool is now allowed to be in this. It is a fourth wall breaking commentary yes. on the corporate goings on of these massive IPs being consolidated mm. into one mega corp. That is part of the joke mm. about it. It is self-aware. It is bringing characters mm. uh, left, right and center into the fray. Don't worry, as we said, this review will be spoiler free. We were going to cover because uh, there is a lot to spoil if, if you're really into it, yeah. but we will cover all of that in a separate video. Um, I mean, you, we could go on. You've got Emma Corrin playing the villain. Yes. Um, and yeah, that's probably most of I the think film is to be discovered. To be discovered, just basically, it's Deadpool Wolverine kind of running around. You've got Emma Corrin, you've got uh, Matthew McFadden as kind of nefarious forces that kind of jumping through hoops and voids and stuff very self-aware uber deadpool humor yeah um george how did you get on with it so i i i think broadly speaking had a good time mm. uh, you know fun I, i've actually i know some people don't like deadpool and some people find it a bit which irritating. i understand yeah i get it. it's not for everyone but I, I i actually always enjoyed deadpool one yeah deadpool two as well and uh, it's more of the same here as well. Yeah. Q, you know, uh, what's the word? Toilet humor and gross out humor. Um, yeah, broadly speaking, I enjoyed it. It's got a high gag rate. And, you know, the way I'd actually probably describe it is that I think this film works best as an event film. Yeah. My only thing is I don't know how well it works outside of that as an actual film. So I went to see it, obviously, at this, at this sort of premiere screening and the people in front of me were just unbelievably excited yeah. any sort of moment you know if you've seen you know there are loads of crowd pleasing moments they would be like yes no way oh my god and like that's wonderful really yeah. and it was everyone was so excited and like it and it was infectious and there were moments mm. that even i kind of guffawed and went oh wow okay no way um and that's really exciting uh, but there was this sneaking feeling i had at the back of my mind as, as the film went on I think broadly, broadly enough, the film kind of works. I think it kind of gets a bit baggy in the middle. There's a certain uh, couple of scenes of Deadpool and Wolverine just sort of walking, walking to, to a place, and then they get in a car to go to a place. I'm like, yeah. anyway, um, and there was a certain point sort of later on, I thought, aside from these great crowd-pleasing moments, I'm wondering how well this actually hangs as a film. And bizarrely, I think even a film like Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 hangs better as an overall film. Because the first one was all about like, this is actually a love story. And the second Deadpool was like, this is actually a family movie. And in this, I I felt uh, that, that, that there's so much on the plane. There's so many big moments. I don't know if the actual under, plot underneath it, like I said, it's kind of split between who's the villain, who's actually the bad force is a little bit uh, messy. But in a way, is that a problem? I don't know. I think it's actually like, this is less of a film, it's more of a set list. And what it reminded me of is when the, the people in my screening were having this reaction, it was like being at a gig for a very famous band and they either brought out an old band member or they played some of their massive hits. Mm. And I kind of think, you know, some people would say that's very cynical, some people say it's like roller coaster cinema. I am inclined to say, well, for, it, maybe it kind of has its place. And, it, and and if you are going to see, I'd almost say you have to see it at the cinema in the next two, three weeks. And I do think the spell, yeah. and it, I don't know how well this film will watch. Watching on an iPad at home is yeah. not going to have the Once same Once all the surprises are out and all the kind of spoilers have been spoiled and, you know, in six months time or two years time, three years time, I don't know how well this film is going to view as much. In a bit yeah. way, the same way you had with No Way Home and then watching it in retrospect. I have a point about that actually, but, um, but yeah. yeah. So but my, that's my thing. I think I, I really, I, you know, I broadly enjoyed it. A lot of people have already messaged us and said, oh, they had a great time in the in, best fun they've had in the cinema. And I'm like, mm. yes, that's why you watch this film mm. in the cinema for the moment. And I think it's it's the first time I've ever like almost valued a film purely on its event mm. aspect and sort of as, as a whole viewing film second. Anyway. So like, interestingly, I've had some friends who are very, they have no skin in the game for Marvel, but they'll mm. see the occasional Avengers, Spider-Man, mm. maybe a funny Thor film here and there, but they don't, they're not keeping track they've probably not seen Loki and anyway I had two people who'd seen it and they said look I had no idea about the setup and what the hell was going yeah. on but I laughed and I had a really good time yes. yeah. and I think of all the MCU films to come out I think look regardless of what I think I think it's a step above a lot of what other, other MCU films have mm. done I actually think it's the easiest film to recommend to people who aren't that checked into MCU right now to go go and have fun because it's not it's not related to anything and I think yeah, it's but funny it's, I, I couldn't like my mum's a very casual Marvel fan I couldn't give her to watch uh, maybe not for so mums. much stuff re 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 referencing 
I think you, I still think it's funny even though, a like Rana went over her head. Right. Okay. But but I agree. There's enough humor in there to keep you invested. That, that's yeah. such a good example. So Anna, very little foothold in this entire world. Yeah. The other two people we saw it with, much stronger foothold. And they and it was interesting seeing both their reactions, both enjoying yeah. it. Sorry, but uh, yeah, that's, it's like easy to recommend, uh, I guess, for, for certain people depending on how connected mm. you are. And you know, the, the build up to this was huge for us, and we had such a big event. And it was uh, not just saying that this is a big film, but like this is an event. This is the spectacle. Mm. Come and see it. And I really enjoyed all of the hype to mm. go and see that. And we got to see the first thirty-five minutes, yeah. and I think we saw the best thirty-five minutes, if you ask me. Of the whole film. I'd say par- past mm. that thirty-five minute point. For me, I agree with you. My interest started to slowly diminish, and I got started to get a little. I did feel the bagginess. I started to get mm. a little bit bored, which I was quite surprised that I started mm. to feel that. And I think when you when you pitch a film as a massive event film, what I really want is I want my characters to be in a really different place at the end of them mm. than at the beginning. One of the things that I've thought about Spider Man No Way Home is yes, the first experience of watching No Way Home is so much better than the following ones. But what I love about No Way Home is that Peter Parker is in a completely mm. different place That's at true. the end of that film than he is at the start. And it really feels like you need to see this. Mm. There are consequences and understanding who this character is and where he's gone. Mm. There's a lot of times with MCU films where you watch them and it feels non-essential like a side mm. project. And I know this is an adjacent film, but I did have a bit of a feeling where I got to my act three and especially the ending where I thought, is Deadpool in a very different place than he is at the start of this film? Not massively. Mm. Yeah. I felt like some of the... Plot. I was a little bit like we had we had so many opportunities and possibilities for jumping into the void and taking these characters and moving further, and um, and I got to some parts parts of the film where I was like, and with with th- there's a moment in the end which I won't spoil where our heroes are fighting multiple versions of a character, and I kind of was there thinking, is that what we've built towards? Mm. Is that the big sort of like third act punchline? Mm. Not that interesting to me. Mm. That being said, the film is so so funny. Mm, it really it is. is. Yeah. It's almost like like we talk about Infinity War. It's amazing that it, it the fact the film got made and it they pulled it off. It's actually just quite a spectacle to see. Um, these people making fun of themselves and yeah. like Ryan Reynolds and writing team getting permission mm. to rip into and essentially parody and spoof the MCU to such an extent mm. and use these characters and use these actors in ways that you just never really thought could be done. Mm. And it shows that Marvel really does have a sense of humor, even if it is boardroom and corporate appro- approved. It, it's so, so funny. And I can't, mm. I can't fault it for being one of the funniest movies of the year. I, agree. I just yeah. got out of it thinking... This isn't that essential to the yeah. story. I've realized what I really want from MCU mm. is like essential progression and growth. Yeah. And when they don't provide that, a lot of it just washes over me. The characters, unfortunately, just don't seem to have an impact when mm. their punches land. Deadpool and Wolverine, at, inherently by their superpowers, they regenerate and none of the hits ever really yeah. mean anything, which makes for very fun action in that you can slice them up and you know stab mm. them in every which way. But apart, if you keep doing that, I'm yeah. almost like, well, this doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Nothing really matters we could just come back to yeah. life um there's this cliche i'm getting so tired of in superhero films which is this third act trope of our heroes having to maintain a power source and hold it otherwise the world's gonna end and quick oh it's gonna blow ah, i'm screaming lightning bolts but nothing ever mm. there's never really any consequence of it and it happens in so many films mm. and i'm so bored of seeing it and that that third act for me i was just like okay when are you going to i'm happy to I, move on i here. became a little bit aware that it would be like very all the action sequences very well shot yeah, and yeah. I, it would be like great action sequence dialogue plod dialogue plod fan service f- plod plod action plod plod mm. fan service plod plod and like it's kind of ah, 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 it's like a, a heart monitor chart going yeah. up and down um and I, I agree with you that the lack of kind of progression is... I'm a bit disappointed overall, I'd say. Like, like because of that. Oh, well, do you know what it is? It's more that I thought this would... I, I was expecting us to be like, wow, this is really course corrected, the MCU. Yeah, this has given it a huge shot in the arm. What a great healthy dose of self-criticism it, it has. And I, I think what it is is more that it hasn't saved the MCU. I think it's just bought it time in a nice way. It's still it's on a, ice. It's a very nice bought itself some time mm. for this year. And it's, it's, it's a little bit of a kind of cul-de-sac because you say no, nothing really changes. You kind of go in, you come out of it. It doesn't affect the main MCU yeah. plot. You get a lot of fan service. You get some great moments. But like I said, as time moves on, you move past it. It doesn't really change anything. Yeah. 
So it's like how like The Flash, which isn't as good as this film, was very funny. Uh, you know what's had funny? A, had yeah. a lot of like you know those moments where they you like I can't believe they did that with yeah. those people. Yeah. Like, loads and loads yes. of fan service. I, so it's funny. It so, it, it, honestly, like that didn't affect any yeah. of the DCU because obviously that's I actually nice. think that bizarrely to bring up the Flash, which I know a lot of people hate, but we had a good time with it. Yeah. That I do think the the plot of the Flash was clearer and more yeah. sl- like straight through than uh, Deadpool Wolverine. I, the, the whole stakes of Deadpool, really Deadpool's whole motivation is like, oh, I've broken up with my my wife and want to prove to her. That is done so fleetingly and so sort of uh, 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 held at arm's length. It's just making jokes. That I was kind of like, jokes. oh, is that what, is your mo- is that is that your motivation? Or yeah. something I don't know. Something like the Flash thought was a lot clearer, but yeah. um, this is a much more high production. And, level, and it's like um, we, we criticize Thor: Love and Thunder for being too far in the realm of spoof and satire. Mm. Whereas I think this succeeds so much more mm. in being a spoof of the MCU. Like yeah. There are multiple scenes in this which don't feel out of place, but mm. feel like MCU sketch comedy. Yeah. Like in particular in the beginning when he goes to Happy and uh, yeah. um, interviews for the Avengers, I just thought that scene was so funny. Yeah, and yeah. Just, just two like really great comedically contrasted actors just going at mm. it. There's a great moment where he's like, Happy Hogan's, you know, I found my place. Yeah. You just need to find yours. And, he's, and it's <laughs> yeah. he's like looking down. He's like, what? And like, that, you were a chauffeur. And also a good example with Thor, because like Deadpool's a funny character, let him be funny. Like Thor yeah. can be funny, but like to an extent. It diminished his his power as a character. So I, I, I've criticized Thor Love and Thunder for doing this, but with Deadpool, that worked so much more. But I think, so my takeaway is this, because I thought coming out of it, I couldn't even put it on letterbox yet, because I was like, how do I actually quantify this film? Because I agree, I think as a film, as a viewable experience going from point A to B, character progression, all that stuff. Mm. It's kind of like a three, three and a half. Mm. But as an event film, it's so much as an fun. event, it's so much more. And I think that is really the only value for it. So that's why I say again, if you want to get something out of this, so you have to go see it soon, you have to yeah. go see it in the big screen. Basically, this how was your week, audience in your in your screen? Good fun. It was like it was, it was Sunday afternoon, but you know the, the opening weekend afternoon, so it was busy. There were like you know teenagers in there, a couple of families. I, I don't I'm mm. glazing, but you know. There were people were laughing at the jokes and people were gasping at some of the reveals. So mm. I had enough ingredients there where I wasn't missing out. Mm. It wouldn't be anything near like going to no, a press no, event. No. But I, I was I was riding the wave and I was chuckling and smiling yeah. at everything. And I can I can never say it's not funny. Like it it's it's one of the funniest films of the it's year. It's a bit like in the same way that Deadpool and Wolverine can like regenerate. It's kind of like it's nice. It's funny. It's chucklesome. It's charming. But it's kind of inconsequential. Yeah. in a bizarre way and you know it's got the, when you watch the trailer it's got this like a prayer you know it looks, yeah. like, it looks like something massive is going to happen when you really kind of think about it yeah. it's kind of and what, what the film was missing is like plot wise again for No Way Home in that third act I really cared about what happened to these characters I mm. wanted to know how mm. it was going to end I didn't spoil this for No Way Home I didn't know when if Tobey Maguire was going to die mm. or if they were going to... I was like, I have to find I wish out. They, I probably think they probably could I think they could, again, no one dies. Done. I actually think like, I was wondering what was going to happen. In the third act of Deadpool, I wasn't really no. interested in what was going to happen that mm. much. I just knew it was going to be, we all made friends along the way, happy, happy. Mm. We, we, we've managed to have some fun here. Mm. So what you want out of these films is going to be different. But I'm realizing slowly, I, I care very little about these MCU side quests. Mm. I want progression. I want like a... Uh, Captain America Civil War, where our mm. characters are split at the end. Make mm. me make it feel essential. Yeah, because the problem is it all because they've produced so much content. And yeah, not, it make everything seems a little bit insubstantial, in, um, inessential. Whereas the priority Rebuilding. here is we're going to have fun, and everyone watching it is going to have a load of fun, and it succeeds in that. And also. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's it. I mean, we're, we're building towards doomsday now yeah. in 2026. Yeah. Let's get us excited back on track, get us on the road for that. Mm. It's been great to have this kind of side things. Um, but that, but I hear myself talking about it and there's a reason, yeah, I'm sort of uh, grasping a little bit about about around it. It's because it is slightly, slightly oddly shaped and insubstantial yeah. and, and hard to define. And I think it could be very, very, you could, I think one could really, go to town and really rip this film apart if they wanted to mm. but also i think you could really celebrate it, it really depends on who you who you are yeah as, as and audience. it's also really aware they will make jokes about how you've joined the mcu at a very bad time mm. the multiverse clearly didn't work yeah. we're trying to fix it let's get rid of that it, it does it does know on um uh hugh jackman returning from logan like the film opens with, you know, are we going to just immediately disrespect what happened to Logan? Yes, but we're going to do it in a very funny way. Even if Deadpool and Wolverine gets to make the joke first, 
that they've, you know, essentially cheapened the, the moment from Logan. It doesn't mean that it hasn't done it. Do you uh, think it has? Well, I think Hugh Jackman's really good in it and he, has, he does some really great acting and some of the moments which they, I think, felt a little bit forced have tried to justify the reason for bringing Hugh Jackman's Wolverine back. I don't think we're enough to make it... Mm. Uh, warrant people who well, make it enough for people who actually care. I think if you now go and watch Logan, it slightly cheapens that that but last I, moment. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm able to compartmentalize in the fact that I know that that character still is not touched. It's, he doesn't resurrect. This isn't a spoiler. He doesn't resurrect the Logan we know from those X Men films. He's found a different Logan. He's found a different Wolverine. I agree. I still think seeing Hugh Jackman himself come mm. back years down the yeah. line, it lessens the impact of the death. Even if this film makes the joke first, I mm. personally think, even though you've done it really well and it's funny, I don't think Wolverine's arc in this massively matters. He, he I don't feel like there was, un, you know, he, this new Wolverine has his own demons. Mm. I don't feel like we resolved the other Wolverine's past mm. and that should have been left. I get why they did it. I'm sure everyone's made a shitload of money. At the yeah. end of the day, it does for me worse than what you've made before. So we're going to talk about the the spoilers in a spoiler cast separately in a bonus. And I do have a feeling once we've run through them, we'll get very excited. We'll yeah, talk about how great they are. Yeah. But we'll get to the end and we'll go, but then what's left of the actual film? Yes. But anyway, we'll do that. Look out for that coming out later this week as a little bonus episode. But that was kind of our thoughts on, on Deadpool Wolverine, which yeah. is fun, solid, enjoyable. Go and see it, I'd say. Go oh, yeah, and yeah. see oh, it you have, uh, To really get the most out of it, you have to go and see it. Yeah, and when you do, send in your thoughts to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. We'd love to hear them out. Uh, probably spoiler-free thoughts, because we'll be doing our spoiler fill yeah. thoughts uh, on Deadpool and Wolverine, and we'll read them out on the show. George, should we go through some of the emails that we get sent into the show every single week? As always, guys, if you want to send in your thoughts, your questions, your concerns, your reviews to the show, you can do by emailing into hello at popkitchenpodcast.com or you can support us on the VIP tier on Patreon to get priority access to have your email read out on the show. Ellie writes into hello at popkitchenpodcast.com and she says, hi, boys. This email coming to you is I've long been out of my opening day screening of Deadpool and Wolverine. I was a little nervous going in, but I'm relieved to say the movie is good. I don't think it'll save the MCU. It didn't need saving, in my opinion. But after a patchy run on the film side of things, to put it politely, I'm relieved to report this is one of the best in the most recent phase. Yeah, I agree. We're phase five? Oh, God, I've, uh, I've lost track. Yeah. The last good one was Guardians 3. It was easier to count them because they used to bookend them with Avengers projects, but now they're not doing that, What's, obviously. Just quickly, since Endgame, the only thing... No Way Home. No Way Home. I'm Black just thinking, Widow. No, yeah, but like, what's been the, the highlights? Oh. Are you, I know you would say No Way Home. Not, not for me, but like... But Guardians 3. Guardians 3. The ending of No Way Home. This. This. I liked Loki. Loki. I did quite like WandaVision. WandaVision, yeah. And, WandaVision actually is up there. Yeah. And then I think that's it. I think yeah, that's it. Nothing else that's been that good, has it? No. Yeah. Right, I'm going to try and be concise, but once I start waffling, I struggle to stop. The cast were great. Emma, Com Emma Corrin gave us a fun and interesting villain. Hugh Jackman, whilst playing Wolverine for a hell of a long time, gave a completely new take on him, which was great. I found it funny hearing him swear. And Ryan Reynolds yeah. was brilliant, balancing heart and silliness well, whilst also toning down some of the humour that made me not like previous movie Deadpool 2, amongst other things. I liked, there's a scene where Hugh Jackman, sorry, there's a scene where Wolverine and Deadpool have an argument in a car mm. and uh, they real, do a real close-up on Wolverine really spitting venom <gasps> at Deadpool and he's great. And I'm like, Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jackman can act. so good. He yeah. really can act. He's really in prestige and Gia mode. Being yeah. Like, How dare you? He sort of looks him here. up and down. Yeah. Like, you, have you can't idea. even do this. You do that. Yeah. You do not know. <laughs> As a fan of these movies, the fan service was just right with certain in-jokes and references getting audible laugh from my nearly full 2pm screening. The cameos were used sparingly and there were still plenty of surprises despite what is thought of the trailers. Call me bloodthirsty, but I found the violence and blood to be quite refreshing to see. Trust yeah. me, I've sat through enough of these 12 ones to say that. The opening sequence was so up my street, it had me with a big grin on my face. There were a couple of very minor points that I was a little disappointed with. Whilst the film, in my opinion, sticks the landing, some plot aspects aren't overly clear. Mm. And whilst Matthew McFadden was fun, yeah, I thought the character could have been played by anyone. I think I would have appreciated mm. him more if I'd watched Succession, perhaps. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. We're a bit primed. I do him. quite like him, though. I think he, regardless, he's I think he's he, did, he, did, he did great. Uh, it is like, can you do that thing but in, yeah. with comic books? But he totally was. At least he's got his British accent in this one. He's, he his did. own, his own yeah. one, yeah. 
Overall, though, it is such a yeah, sort of like smarmy British villain yeah. type. Uh, overall, though, this is such a fun movie, I would gladly see it again. And like I said in a previous email, this embraces what makes these characters great and is all the better for it. We'd love to see you guys come and visit Birmingham so I could come to one of your film quizzes, but keep doing what you were doing. I always look forward to new episodes. Much love, Ellie in Birmingham. P.S. A Deadpool cosplayer turned up at the end of my screening, so I channeled some confidence and got a picture. Ah. And she's attached a lovely picture with a very um, uh, accurate. movie accurate uh, costume. Very sweet to see. Fantastic. Uh, George, by the time we're recording this, the quiz will be the evening. The very off, excited. Yeah. We were filming the week <gasps> of the quiz. Ooh, We've got two nights, but quiz, very excited quiz. to see you all there. George. Um, this next email is from Ross. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Ross, who says, Watch it, boys. First of all, thank you. Not for anything specific, just for the existence of yourselves and this magical podcast. You're Isn't welcome. What, what a lovely thing to say, Ross. Thank Thanks, you. Ross. A few things to stick my Norfolk ore in. Mm. I was showing a friend of mine recently one of your film sound games to test him. He resists the podcast currently, but I'm working on it. Thank you, Ross. Get him. I was playing the Toy Story one, and my five-year-old son, Leo, is in the room. His ears pricked up, and he yelled at me, That's from Toy Story 2! Fantastic. I was flabbergasted. I said, You're absolutely right, mate. Which bit? He thought about it for a second, and you see him entering his mind palace. And then moments later, he says, Oh, it's when the guy thinks he's Woody. Well, friends, I punched the air and gave him the biggest high five and hug. I've never been so proud. Film nerd in the making. That's fantastic. Well done, Leo. Fantastic. Something else I've been sitting sitting on for a while is relating to interesting places to watch films. Mm. I grew up on the Sandringham estate and watched the first three Harry Potter films at release time in Sandringham House, the Queen's Cinema Room, wow. which happened to be the armory with swords and axes mounted on the walls. Very wow, very cool. that, that really works. Really, it's very Hogwarts, isn't it? Wow, that's very interesting. That's also, cool. I love the idea of the Queen just having her own cinema room. Of course she like, does. Could you put on Reservoir Dogs, I'd please? like to see Fast and Furious yeah. 9. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, do you have the fate of the Furious? <laughs> do you have John Wick Chapter 4? <laughs> I like pa it. Parabellum? I like it really. <laughs> she fucks shit up. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> finally, I promise, there was a discussion about actors who suddenly disappeared and, and I'd like to showcase Kevin Klein. Yes, I saw Sophie's Choice last month. I thought it was absolutely amazing. I assumed he was an Oscar nominated um, as well as Street, but but um, but he wasn't even nominated. He won the Oscar for A, a Fish Called Wanda and since hasn't been in a prominent role in a decent film apart from Wiki Wild Wild West, which I used to love <laughs> as a kid. But bring back Kevin Klein. It's not too late. Much love as always. Ross. Yeah, I like, do you know Kevin Klein? Do you know what I'm talking about when we saw that? His name rings a bell. If you, you might recognize his face. Yeah, he's a real talented actor. Really fun. I'd love to see him in more stuff. I think the last thing he did that was prominent was he was the dad in the Beauty and the Beast live action remake. He was in Last Vegas with... Michael Douglas and Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. Oh, yeah. Really good, talented actor. We'd love yeah. to see him in more. But maybe, you know, maybe he just moves on. Thank you, Ross. Do you think the Queen would ever be like, shut the door, I'm watching Bridgerton. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing an all-nighter. <laughs> Philip! <laughs> yes. Uh, this next one is from Adam. From Brisbane, Australia. Hello. Hello, George and James, James and George. Currently writing this email while waiting for my showing of Long Legs to start, which I'm very excited about. But this email is not about that. I'm writing in about an experience that I had at a recent showing of Furiosa, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, there was a Furiosa reference in, yeah. in that, which is very funny. In, sorry, Deadpool Wolverine, which is very funny. Uh, whilst I was waiting outside of the theatre for the showing to start, I was standing near a poster for the upcoming Wicked movie with Ariana Grande. Whilst I was waiting, the children saw the poster on the wall and loudly exclaimed, it's Wicked, to their mother who was with them. And it got me thinking about the movies that, was, that I was excited to see when I was younger. So my questioning to you both is, what is the first movie that you can remember that you were excited to go and see at the movies been loving the show and slowly getting through your back catalogue all the best Adam from Brisbane Australia great question uh, going into my mind palace now yeah uh, Toy Story 2 I remember yes um, I've talked about Shrek before the, the first Harry Potter was really big mm. for us I saw that six times in the cinema because mm. everyone's birthday party yeah. was to go and see Harry Potter. It was really big. Mm. And I just remember it, like, it was all encompassing and I started reading the books around the same time. Mm. I, oh God, I I don't know what about the first one. I think I was really excited to see Bruce Almighty. Yeah. Because I love Jim Carrey. So I was yeah. really excited to see that. And it, the trailer looked funny and it was funny. Yeah. Ditto. I remember seeing that. 
Um, yeah, Shrek was one. The yeah. Toy Story 2, absolutely. I can't remember going to see a film. I remember seeing The Grinch, but I don't remember being that like overly excited I don't about it. seeing The Grinch. I think Toy Story 2 is probably the film yeah. I saw the first. It's probably my first, that's 99, I think. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's genuinely one of my earliest cinema memories. Yeah. Toy Story 2. Because I would have been five. Yeah. I don't think even I don't think I even went to the cinema to see Phantom Menace. I don't think. Did I? I, did. I? I must have I done seeing Phantom Menace. I must have done. I mean, I yeah. Anyway, I don't have it, but those are some. It's early though. I remember really liking Bugs Life when I was a kid as yeah. well. At home yeah. more, home view. We watched yeah, it a lot. It's funny because I think that's really the the forgotten Pixar film down the back of the sofa. Bugs Life. Yeah. More people follow like like Cars than Bugs Life. Yeah. It's a good one. It's older. This next email is from Tyler. Tyler writes in and says, Hi guys, just quickly want to say, loving the pod as always makes me want to start my own, but we'll see. It will be my birthday, the day that your 140th episode will drop. So I was wondering if you have any, uh, if you have any either, I think any movie recommendations, either about birthdays or just something to watch on my birthday. Keep up the good work as your podcast gets me through the morning delivery shifts. Cheers, Tyler. First of all, so that'll be next week's episode. Yeah. So you need a film... A to film watch on your birthday about birthdays or or to watch on your birthday about birthdays about birthdays sixteen candles I don't think it's, I don't think it's a great film but it's about a birthday um, liar liar birthday wish makes oh it all go liar liar that's great well also the, the crucial thing is Tyler you haven't included what age you're turning yeah so I don't know if you're turning sixteen or one hundred forty yeah yeah or you're turning forty what what yeah. could be I mean like if you assuming you you're into films so you could either watch your favorite film out of comfort and familiarity or you can pick a great film you've not seen to treat yourself on your birthday the first knives out is a birthday party with Christopher Plummer blowing out the candles on his cake yeah um I don't. I don't know. Depends. We need more info. I think if you're turning 30, watch the episode of Friends where they all turn 30. It's very funny. Yeah, that's, that's good. a good one to do. This next one is from Robert, who writes in and says, Dear James and George, George, George and James, long-time listener and lover of the pod and first-time email sender. Really enjoying the decade favourites as they offer a great deal of inspiration. Yes, last week we did our best movies of the 1990s. If you haven't listened to that, please do go back and do that. Completes the trifecta mm. of 10s, noughties, 90s. On the 90s episode, you said that that decade belonged to Jim Carrey, which I totally agree with. Yeah. I mean, he really, really excelled. But when talking about achievements of a single actor slash actress, you can't sweep pa- past Tom Hanks. Thanks filmography of that very decade. True, very true. And then you list a bunch of films. Sleepless in Seattle, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, Toy Story, Saving Private Ryan, You've Got Mail, The Green Mile. Oh, wow. What a list of films. <laughs> Actually, when you stack it up, yeah. It's quite, it's quite substantial. What a list of films and performances. Two Oscars and another nomination. He came into his own. Mm. On the, and, and he never really stopped. Like, he's still, yeah, he's still powered actors, through yeah. the North, Yeah. On this occasion, I just want to thank you for the content. By far the best movie content slash podcast out there. Keep up the work. Big love from Germany. Robert. Hey. Totally agree. Yeah. Tom thank Hanks, you. a titan. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he made in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, this next email is from Josh, who writes in about Avengers Doomsday. Hi, boys. Hope you're doing well. Recently, as you probably know, Marvel have announced that Robert Downey Jr. will be returning to the MCU playing Victor Von Doom. And I wanted to know your thoughts on this. For me, being in love with Marvel movies as a teenager, particularly phases two and three, I, I love that uh, you can have particular phases as yeah. well, like 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 a like a wine connoisseur, yeah. <laughs> particularly in the particularly. later the latter era of yeah. Marvel. I'm honestly torn about this decision. <laughs> Obviously, RDJ is such a great actor, and I think he could play this new role very well. But I don't know how it will feel seeing this actor play a different character in the MCU. Well, that's we, something we talk we talk about this on Double Take. This, we talked all about it. This. In but James take. and I have a big debate about whether he's playing. Of Tony Stark variant, or I think he's playing a completely different character, just happens to be played by Robert Downey Jr. But we'll, we'll yeah. follow Double Take to follow that. I've heard theories about this version of Victor Von Doom maybe being a variation of Tony Stark that was evil, and honestly, I'm not too thrilled about it. What mm. are your thoughts? Well, our thoughts are on Double Take. Also, I was recently listening to your episode about the best sequel movies. Okay. When did we do that? Ago. That was a while back. Yeah, a while back now. I wanted to add a personal favorite of mine, which was Captain America, The Winter Soldier. For yeah, me, fair. I absolutely loved it. And I had it had a twist I never saw coming, but it just seemed to work really well. I also loved how it wasn't too complicated. The stakes really seemed big and it really was relevant. And the aftermath of the movie carried through to other MC movies as well. Consequence, what we talked about yeah. earlier. The, our characters and our universe is in a different place from the beginning to the yeah. end. Really important. For me. Hope you're both well. I look forward to every episode of this great podcast. Thank you, Josh. Thank very you very much. much. That concludes our emails today. Thank you everyone for sending those in. 
Um, a lot, of, lot to talk about today. It's, a lot, it's been a big, 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 my head is buzzing with Marvel news and MCU discussion. Keep them in. We but shall we reviews. finish, James, with a nice game to send us home? Let's do it. It's quiz day, George. The quiz is happening. I know. Chances are people are listening to this while the quiz is going on, or they've come to the quiz and they the saved our off their phones if they're on the quiz. They should be, you should be off your phones. But I'm, uh, George, I'm really excited. I'm really excited too. I cannot and wait. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone who can make it. Obviously, if there are people who can't make it, we understand it's a school night. It's in London. Not yeah. everyone necessarily will be able to make it. Some people, obviously, international listeners may be able to make it. But yeah. we thank you for your Follow support anyway. at Pop Kitchen Podcast on all social media to see the shenanigans from the quiz. So we conclude this episode of Pop Kitchen because we're prepping the quiz, <laughs> we realize our a brain power of weeks has been kind of uh, isolated in doing that. So we, it's not going to be a sound. We want to play week. the games we play on the show at the quiz. And we've realized there are only so many films. <laughs> so I came up with just a very quick, very silly game to end this episode. Yep. Now, James, mm -hmm. um, we played mm -hmm. around, I want to say, a year ago, okay. which was Can You Guess the Title of the Movie? But the title of the movie was in Spanish. Oh, great. <laughs> this yeah. week, I present to you, in honor of the Paris Olympics, the, Can You Guess the Title of the Movie? But the title of mov the movie is French. Oh. However, oh. I just want to clarify this has a slight, uh, there's, it's elevated, okay? Okay. Because last time, I literally just whacked the titles into Google Translate. Uh, but this time, you've... I've actually taken the titles officially used as on the film's release. So Great. these are English language films that have been released in France and they're in two sections. I'm gonna give you two rounds, okay? The first round is where they have used English, I believe, according to the website I found on, online, they still used English words, but they changed mm. the title, okay? okay? The second batch are French, uh, French it's complete French language for okay. the title. Do you All understand? Right. I think I understand, yeah. So the first one I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna run through films that have different titles but they're still in it. The words are still English, but the French film board or whatever changed them for which the French Which happens a lot. Which happens a lot. Yeah. Okay. And I've seen some of the, I think this is accurate because I've seen the picture, the poster These are good. comparisons. I, the, the best, the really crazy ones are when they translate it into Asian languages because oh, the, yeah. like the Fast and Furious stuff or like all these crazy titles with colons just don't get translated literally. So again, the first round is this. I'm going to name. Apologies I'm, to any French language speakers. But this is not, I'm not, there's no French being required for this first round because Fine. this is just English language. This is <laughs> English language films that have been released in France, but have been translated into different, have been given different titles by the French film board, but they are still English. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Guess the film from its French translation. I don't know if I'll ever put this on social. It's too clunky, but guess the film. From its French translated title. Um, from it, um, guess the movie from the title it was given in France. Are okay. you ready? Sexy Dance 2. Uh, is it uh, Step Up 2? It the is streets? Step Up 2 yeah. The Streets. Yeah. The Hit Girls. The Hit Girls? Is it uh, Heat? No, the it's Hit Girls. Pitch Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crazy Amy. Um, is it train wreck? It is, <laughs> yes, well done. American Bluff. Uh, American Bluff, American Hustle. Yes. Very Bad Cops. Uh, very Bad Cops. Is it like that? Uh, uh, not the other guys? It's exactly yeah, the, the other guys. guys. Yeah. Wow. I was thinking of that random one, the cop film with um, what's face for a. Let, let's be cops. Do you think about yeah, that one? Or let's bad be boys? cops. Yeah. And then lastly, Rasta Rocket. <laughs> Rasta Rocket. Uh, Rasta Rocket. <laughs> what? <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> that is Cool Runnings. Uh, <laughs> that's very good. What's the rocket got to do with it? I guess because it's guess, the Bob yeah. Slay, like, in anyway. France, that, okay, great, yeah. This is gonna be, now, now I'm gonna give you them in actual French. Okay, okay. All right. And my, please apologies, my, my apologies to any French language listeners. I have a GCSE in French, Same. I got C. <laughs> I don't regularly practice French. I'm gonna try and give it my best accent. I got an A, but it's, it's not gonna come across. <laughs> this has all been taken, oh, well done. Hey, all good for you. Okay. This is gonna uh, direct from the internet. So <laughs> Wait until the game's over. <laughs> okay. James. Yeah, we. Oui. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> James. We. Oui. Guess the movie from its French film title. Are you ready? We. Oui. Maman, j'ai raté les avions. <laughs> well, the, well, the, uh, the plane. Maman, j'ai raté les avions. I arrived at the plane. What did you? Sh sh I've left the plane. Mama, I've, <laughs> what? Mom, I missed the plane. 
Mum, I missed the plane. What film does a famously a child miss? Oh, a plane? Home Alone. Yes, Home Alone. Doctor for l'amour. Doctor Sleep. Doctor for the Dead. No, uh, Doctor for l'amour. Break that down. Amour. For Doctor Love. Doctor Strange Love. Yes. Les dents de la mer. The, the teeth of the sea. Yes. The, the, the teeth of the sea. Think about that. What does that mean? The teeth of the sea could be. What kind of film has that in it? Teeth in the sea. Teeth in the sea. Jaws. Yes. Ah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. Du soleil plein la tête. Two, the, 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 the du, two sons. Du soleil plein la tête. Plein la tête of the head. Uh, do you want me to translate it for you? What was it? Du soleil. Du soleil. Du soleil plein la tête. Of sun and of sun and head. Yes. Of the sun and the head. Of yes. The sun of the. It's not a literal translation. Think about the movie. What, the, what you've got? Sun and a head. Yes. <laughs> and what movie is about the? A ton of sun, sunshine of the spotless mind. Yeah! Oh my god, I love it. Yes. Bien sûr, bien sûr. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready, ready. You're yeah. doing great. <laughs> Mon fantôme d'amour. The Phantom Menace? No. Mon Phantom. The Phantom of the Opera? No. The Phantom. Not Dread. Literal, not, literal, not literal translation. Uh, uh, fan, what, what is a phantom? Ghost in the Shell. No. The Ghost. Mon Phantom d'Amour, which translates as my ghost, ghost lover. Which is. Ghost. Yes, yeah. well done. <laughs> <clears throat> Mon beau père et moi. Uh, my, 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 bro, my good brother and me. Mon beau père. Père. Mon beau père. My Emma. father and me. Beau be père. Beau père. What's a beau père? Well, what if you don't have a father? You might have stepfather. a stepfather. Uh, a stepfather. Uh, similar. Uh, uncle. If you marry someone, you get a S- stepfather. But you know, if you, if you marry someone, their father is your my father-in-law. Uh, meet the parents. Yes, meet the parents. Yeah, exactly. Meet the parents. Yeah. Exactly. Meet yeah. The parents. yeah. Nice. Le Odyssée de Pi. <laughs> <laughs> Life of Pi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and last, yeah. You're, you've got all of them so far, James. Well done. And the last one, hey, can French. you get them all? <laughs> SOS Phantoms. <laughs> SOS. SOS Phantoms. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yes! Bien sûr. Those titles are mad. They're so oh. good. Wait, just read me again. Okay, so again. okay. Some of those titles are so strange. So, Maman, j'ai raté l'avion. <laughs> is Mom, I missed the plane. That's good. Do- which is Home Alone. Doctor Falamor, Doctor Strange Love. Yeah, that again. Les dents de la mer. La dent de la mer. I'm de la surprised mer. they didn't just go for Jaws. 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 <laughs> Les dents de la mer. The teeth of the sea. <laughs> du soleil prend la tête. Yeah, it was, I think Tell it's like step, I didn't know step bro- Oh, sorry, um, that's father-in-law. Yes, yeah, so, so, mon, uh, mon fantôme d'amour, which probably is probably the most famous father-in-law film. I would say so. Yeah. Uh, and Le Ghost of de B. Yeah. And then, <laughs> SOS Phantoms. <laughs> Guys, Help, I, I, I do think my French is better than I've just given it to you. you oh, know? But, that's um, good. There you go. Je we, voudrais, could do, we could have some more fun with that. That's je, really good. Je voudrais parler avec toi en français, mais mon français est assez mauvais. Désolé. Désolé. Wow, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pulp Kitchen. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. Don't forget, we post new episodes of this show every single Wednesday. Merci pour la écoute de le Pulp Kitchen. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening very much. And uh, thank you for continuing to support us on social media. And for those who support us on Patreon, thank you very much. And please continue to do so, particularly our producers, Aiden and Finn. We really appreciate it. And you guys, you're missing out on loads of stuff if you're not double on Patreon. Double take is great. We're putting double take behind the scenes content, Trailers. us out and about. We talked about the Bob Dylan trailer. Bob talked Dylan trailer, some Apple, all sorts of Apple interesting stuff streaming, to do with streamers, streamers wars. budgets changing. We're, we're trying to predict the future of the world and that show. See these fingers? We got them on the pulse. It's okay. really good fun. Um, and if you just want to hear more newsy, rumory stuff from us, it's a great place to be. So get on there. So that is Patreon. And just again, thank you for everyone who supports us. And thank you for just tuning in each week. If you're a new listener, if you're a regular listener, we really appreciate you doing that. We love it. Um, Have a great week. Thanks very much. See you next week. Bye. Bye.